tuning in from Laredo. Uh, we've got, last time we had a, a lot of individuals tuning in from um, outside of Texas, which I think is really, really cool. But I think that just goes to show that uh, community happens wherever you are. And also too, the idea of transplants. Texas is, is, is so huge and we're built on people that are from here, born and raised like I am, or a lot of transplants too. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. So of course I had to kick off with this cover, this this epic cover from Texas Monthly that honored Selena. Selena, Selena was her 50th birthday, I think it was last week. And so I, I just thought this cover was so incredible, um, a tribute to her and her legacy, which continues on here for so many, so many women that she inspired. Um, and as I shared before, we are, we are an ecosystem. Um, we are here to not replace anything that's happening in the state, but to hopefully support what's going on. Uh, there's a lot of incredible organizations here, uh, but we just believe that it's time to create our own table, if you will. Um, it's just important that uh, individuals are here working together and that we create our own table so that those that maybe have not had a voice feel like they have a voice now. Um, so I'm really excited about that. If you caught us last week, we had Abby Farron. Abby Farron is a global designer. I, she was one of the first designers when I was kind of starting my career. I started investing in some, some pieces. Uh, she, she was um, building this massive brand, Abby Farron, and she decided to say, hold up. It's time for a little transformation. She paused and she met another Texas queen, Susie Batiste. Uh, who who inspired her to kind of go a different path. They're now working on a really cool project called Alive OS, which is a cool initiative that Susie has created. And Abby also has created a new line as well that's based on her travels and her ventures in Peru. And so she's still based here in Dallas, still doing the thing, but she's got a lot of cool stuff. So if you didn't get to check that episode last week, uh, she was incredible. You can go to hertexas.co, built in Texas to check out that, that episode. She was amazing. Um, and of course, I should let you all know about our, our launch. So what's interesting about Her Texas, I've been working on Her Texas for the last two years. And because of COVID, you know, things, of course, pause and change. And I was planning on launching it last year. But I'm actually so thankful that I got some time to pause because I think my vision for it was too small. And so we're, we're working on a much bigger vision for, for Her Texas. I'm thankful for all the men and women who have been part of this journey, who have been part of my journey, have supported all my crazy ideas <laughs> and visions and events. Uh, and so we're excited. Uh, this is really honestly the big first official big launch for, for her Texas. And it is a theme of the new Texas. Um, it's time for a new table. It's time for a new voice. It's time for uh, much more diverse perspectives here in the state of Texas. Uh, we wanna cause a really large shift. And I think all big amazing shifts in history have always started with women not being biased here. <laughs> So 5321 is our big, huge launch. We've got a lot of really cool things planned. That is on a Monday, so we'll be doing our, our uh, Built in Texas show, but it will be an all day. Um, I'm not gonna say party, y'all, because it's virtual. <laughs> if we were live, of course, we'd be doing some amazing parties, but that's okay, we don't still, we're gonna still make it fab. So um, this is gonna be, a, we have a lot of cool things planned. We have a big email going out this Wednesday that will tell you more details on that. If you go to hertexas.co, you can sign up for that and get all the cool, really cool details. Um, here's all of our information. We're on, of course, all the channels. Uh, we do have a really cool private Facebook group. We um, have, have been on pause for a little bit, but now it's back live and we're sharing events around the state, resources, women you should know. So all you gotta do is go to Facebook, look for Her Texas, and you'll see both our Facebook page as well as our private group um, that is open to, if you are a woman in Texas or doing business in Texas, that group is open to you. Okay, I feel like I should stop rambling on you guys. I, my coffee's kicking in. <laughs> and connect you with the incredible uh, women that are joining me today. As always, every week, it's my hope to not only bring you uh, amazing women that are they're doing interesting things here in the tech in Texas or beyond, but it's also about connecting each other too, right? So I think each week uh, we're sharing some ideas, we're introducing you to some some fabulous women, but we're also connecting each other as well. And so I'm excited to introduce you to um, two special women, Nick Sally. So Nick and I met, oh gosh, two years ago, Nick, a year ago, was it? It all runs together, but it was it was the last event you were able to do in Austin. 
<laughs> where okay. we met uh, at that point in time. So at least a year ago. Okay, cool. Uh, Gianni, thank you for being a, uh, one of the awesome men that support us always. Hey, thank you for tuning in from LinkedIn. Uh, nice to see you, Nick, too, by the way. And as always, you were always glistening and glowing. <laughs> if we don't have time to go into the skincare regimen, we'll have to do this later. I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay, cool. And Brooke Lopez. Hey, Brooke. Hey, Jasmine. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for, for joining uh, Nick and I this morning for Built in Texas. So excited to have both of you. How was your weekend? It was good. I just always got to say this, but um, for everyone watching, I am streaming from my childhood bedroom. <laughs> that is the only space I get some private time. So thank you guys for letting me join you from where it all started. Brooke, you know, we have to get in where we fit in, girl. So <laughs> make magic forever. Well, thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, I we uh, I want to kind of get into uh, our conversation. And, and one of the things I'm always curious about is what problem or challenge are you looking to solve? And so Brooke, you know, I Brooke and I connected because I, I saw her speaking at an event and immediately starts professionally stalking her. And I was like, mm, try to get her to build in Texas because she's doing she's doing a thing for sure. Brooke, tell us about Lone Star Parody. And what challenge or problem are you looking to solve right now? Yeah, so I co-founded Lone Star Parody Project now over three years ago with Adriana Mayberry. We were both students at the University of Texas at Dallas at the time. Um, and we found a huge gap in research that we were conducting. So I was actually doing my final senior honors thesis. I was getting ready to leave college and I learned that there's almost no research right now covering how many women are elected down to the local level um, in any state, but definitely not in Texas, where we have 254 counties, like 5,000 cities uh, or municipalities. So it was something that we realized needed to be covered because in order to actually know and start trying to help women get elected and find um, their representative voice in democracy, we have to actually know how many women are serving in the first place. So Adriana and I have founded the Lone Star Parity Project, which is a nonpartisan organization dedicated to sharing the research and stories of Women Plus in Texas politics. So that's kind of big picture what we do. We're storytelling, we're data capturing, we're putting out um, reports covering, I think 10,000 data points is how far we've gotten with how many people we've actually analyzed. So we are just trying to identify how many women are actually running down to the local level and what can we do to make that number higher? What can we do to make the number of women in elected office currently higher? Okay, I mean, I love that. And I think to your point exactly of the size, right, of Texas, I think we probably share similar kind of uh, goals in the fact that we've got a huge state here. We've got incredible men and women, uh, but specifically target obsessively focused on the women here. Like, how do we connect? How do we bridge those gaps? We have so many uh, women here. And, you know, uh, each city feels like it's a different state sometimes. Like, I just was in Houston this weekend. It felt like I was like, I feel like I was in a, like, a completely new world already. And I feel like that's kind of what's happening in Texas, too. Um, are you, first of all, I have to ask, are you going to run for office? Because I, I, that would be weird if I didn't ask you that, Brooke. Um, well, I ran for office when I was 18, so well, I won't say how many years ago that was. Of course you did. Of course, <laughs> of course you did. Yes. yes uh, I did run for office. Um, it was a really interesting experience. I ran uh, in a community that wasn't ready for the first Latina elected official. So um, it was a lot that I learned from it. And I don't know if that'll happen again, but we'll see. Okay. So what should women right now know about Lone Star Parity Project. So if I am in a town of 200 or I'm in a town of 2 million, what should we know about it and how can we get plugged in or get involved? I think what you mentioned earlier about the point that it really does feel like when you're going to different cities within Texas, because we are so big, it really does feel like you're going into a whole new state. Mm -hmm. So with Lone Star Parity Project, our focus is geographically based, given that Texas is so large with 254 counties. We are not only trying to figure out how many women are actually running down to the local level, but we're also analyzing that by county, by seat. We're analyzing that uh, by political party. 
And so all of these tools that we are uncovering and providing to the public for free will be invaluable to candidates that are women because then you're able to tap into the reason why you might be facing an obstacle in your campaign and find a way to overcome it. You know that you're one of the first women or you're running in a county that has never been at or near parity, which means 50% or more women are elected in that county. You'll know going in the kind of resources you might need. I think um, the mission of, of what you're doing is so critical and important. Um, it's kind of like when we talk about diversity inclusion, you know, before you can hire the chief diversity officer, inclusion officer, before you can roll out the programs, you really have to start looking at the elements of the, the company or the organization to see kind of where, where you are before you can roll out those solutions. So I think what you're doing is so important. Um, one of the reasons why I wanted to pair you two is because you're kind of working with women um, and getting the data points and, and increasing awareness and education. But Nick, what I love about Nick is that she's really working at it from that other element of the branding side of it. And Nick has like six jobs like I do. <laughs> Actually, I think Nick may have more. <laughs> um, but Nick, so I know you work with Facebook. I want you to tell us a little about what you do, but to this point of of women running or women looking out to do something epic with themselves, with their careers or their business or in politics. Can you tell us about what should they know about personal branding? Like how has it impacted your career and why is it so important, especially in 2021? Oh yeah, for sure. Now that's, that's a really great question. Let me just give you some really quick background to set the context here. So uh, when I was in college, I interned for someone who was at EMI Music Marketing, EMI owned Virgin and Capital Records. After college, I rolled on full time and I was the youngest person on their team and they gave me the Dallas Fort Worth market to work with, which was the number seven market in the US. So you know that whenever an artist comes through on a tour, they will stop in Dallas because it's such a huge market. And so at like 22 years old, they trusted me with that huge market and I was the marketing rep representing um, you know, everything from R&B to country to heavy metal and all of that and taking care of those artists when they came in town. That got me interested in entertainment law. So after that, I went to law school and I got my JD with a certification in intellectual property, which is trademark, copyright, that kind of stuff. After that, we were in the recession. <laughs> so it was really tough to get a job as a new attorney. Um, and so I went uh, to Austin. I moved to Austin to work for Facebook out of law school and I served on the intellectual property operations team. We built out the notice and takedown program globally. I wrote policies. I trained and managed our first contractor team, teaching them IP law and things like that. And at the same time, I also ran my law firm, my trademark law firm on the side and always have because honey, the bar exam is not easy. I passed it on the first time and I'm never taking it again. <laughs> So, um, oh, wait, Brooke, aren't you in law school right now? Yeah, oh, I'm in law school yeah. right now. And I'm actually taking the bar in, in um, three July. months. So, yeah. <laughs> you'll have to, okay, you'll have to, you guys have to Bless connect you. offline for sure. Well, honey, I'm going to light some candles for you. I'm going to say, I'm some sage. It's going to work <laughs> out. It's going to be all good. Yes. Um, <laughs> But yeah, and now I've transitioned to the Global Business Group, which is advertising and sales. So I've gone full circle and I now manage Fortune 500, Fortune 50 healthcare companies um, where I'm maintaining and generating on average eight figures of ad revenue per quarter um, and helping them with their strategy across Facebook, Instagram. And so I do all this coaching and training and mentoring, you know, whether it was, you know, new people coming into the the org or my own legal clients i'm training them and things like that and what i can tell you working in social media tech law authenticity is the key to branding now we're all thinking oh you have to have this life you know your personal life here and your business life is separate and you're kind of like wearing a mask but those days are long gone now it's about integrating the whole person into whatever work-life balance that they have. So for me, the way that manifests is my personal branding is when I run my law firm, it doesn't read like a law firm. You go to my website, nicksally.com, you're gonna see not me in a black suit, a tie, and that pinstripes, whatever. I'm in a white suit, <laughs> um, you know, sitting on the kitchen counter, basically working through different things. And it's supposed to humanize this area of law where 
my audience should feel like, hey, we went to college, we were best friends in high school, and I just so happened to become an attorney, and now you come sit at my kitchen table and ask me all the legal questions you want. And I just break things down for you so that you feel supported and cared for and nurtured to grow your business. I wanna make law accessible. And so personal branding now is about being authentic. I'm also a very spiritual person. So you're gonna see on my website, crystals, sage, I read tarot cards. I'll pull a tarot card in a legal session in a minute, honey. Like if we need some more clarity from spirit, why not? You know. So most people don't lead with that, but I do. And I think that sets me apart from other attorneys because I'm, I'm mixing left brain, right brain, um, creativity, logic, and all those things, which really helps me have a well-rounded session with a client. So personal branding is all about authenticity. I, I mean, I love that. And I feel like it, social media and sometimes society is telling us opposite of that too. A lot of times for me, I'm horrible with social media because I'm like, I have nothing cool to post y'all. There's no, there's nothing cool to post today. There's nothing, but I love the fact that it's about being authentic, authentic. And I have a friend who coined the term professional. And I think it's to the same point that you have, Nick, is this, this, these two worlds together that's supposed to be this joint thing. So maybe tell us what was 2020 like for you? Like, were you still doing your Reiki or were you really wearing them tarot cards out in 2020? Like, tell me what happened. You know, it, it was a lot going on for 2020, to be quite honest with you, before we hit March, I was ramping up my law firm and uh, my business coaching arm of the law firm, again, non-traditional, um, to launch a course. I have Brand Magic, which is a branding course. It's 30 days long, and it basically helps entrepreneurs to get their branding in shape so that they can be professional and launch in a way that makes sure their audience knows who they are, trust them, and then will convert. So I had the class lined up and then COVID happened and all of my students couldn't um, you know, take the course, they needed to reset and that was totally understandable. And so we all needed to reset. So I think for me, taking that step back, reassessing my own business, how I could be of service to other people, uh, it, it made me take kind of a, a look at where else can I serve and how can I help my clients or potential clients? It also made me really focus on rest, to be very honest with you, and self-care, which went right on over, over into the spiritual realm. So yes, I was doing Reiki for myself, for friends. Um, my mom loves it. Um, but I was also wearing the tarot cards out, like spirit, what's next? <laughs> what's the theme for now? And I will tell you three readings in a row, spirit same, said the same things, like you need to sit down please take several seats. <laughs> you need to rest because if you don't, you're going to burn out. So it was really a thing of being in my masculine a lot and always wanting to go, 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 because that's how you prove you're worthy. You, you show impact. Spirit was like, no, lean into the feminine, rest, plan, uh, you know, get a massage or whatever, whenever it's safe to do so. Um, drink your tea, you know, make sure you're doing all of these, this self-care stuff. Cause that's actually part of it. It's not always appreciated, but rest is part of, of working. And I tell people when they do their business plans, I'm like, you should be building in vacation time. <laughs> Breaks should actually be a part of your business plan. Um, so that's kind of what happened for me is just resetting. Now the course is evergreen. Um, I've come up with more plans. I'm doing my own rebranding, which is very exciting because I want to bring in the spiritual side of the business as well and, and let that be more prominent. Um, so 2020 was really a year of discovery for me and getting out of my comfort zone by making myself stop and rest and like be okay with planning and not moving a million miles an hour. Um, I love that. I can't wait to see the new brand because I think that's what always stood out about you with me was that you had you're embracing both of these sides. One of the things about her text is along with just creating a community that lets us start talking like this with one another is this holistic perspective of entrepreneurship. You know, a lot of times we're, we're out there hustling, pushing, trying yeah. to find capital, trying to get customers, trying to even know what we're doing. And we, we totally forget about the wellness piece of it. Um, until we get to the point where we have to force, we have to stop. And so I think with COVID, COVID has been challenging for so many of us, but it also has given us a time to rest. I was uh, reading somewhere where the environment got a break too. You know, so many yeah. amazing things happen environmentally too. Brooke, I'm interested about, um, you know, with, with Nick, 
you go on her website and she does look like like that amazing girl you went to school with that always had her hair together and was like always her grades were great. I'm like, what was I doing? Right. But she's like this badass attorney and doing all this incredible stuff. The misconception people have of women, too. And even with me, too, I don't have children yet. Um, of course, I like children, but I focus really on my career. And the, the, I've had so many people tell me, I guess you don't really want to have kids, Jazz. And I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Or you just prefer to do this. And it's like, no, we're like these these full, well-rounded people that have passions and hopes and dreams. I'm curious about you. You seem like you've been ambitious for, you know, probably you were that girl selling the Girl Scout cookies like I was too and killing it. What's the biggest misconception have of you? You know, people probably would know that Nick is into the spiritual Reiki and tarot cards um, portion of her, of her business. I love that she's infusing that with her brand. What's the biggest misconception people have of you? Um, so I, I really think the biggest misconception people have about me is that I don't actually take time to do the things that I want to do. So, um, I had a friend the other day, she was like, when do you sleep? And I'm like, no, really? I do get mm -hmm. seven, eight hours of sleep because I personally prioritize that because I love sleeping. So, mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, kind of a lesson of teaching myself, just like Nick mentioned about the importance of rest and caring for yourself. Um, my first year of law school, which was also the first full year that Lone Star Parody Project had been in action, um, I ended up getting really sick. I just a, a barrage of things like I, um, so my eyesight declined almost immediately in law school, which was insane. Wow. Um, never thought that would happen to me. I had like perfect vision going in and then I couldn't even see like road signs. Um, wow had to have my gallbladder removed, mm -hmm. had to like wear this brace on my elbow because I was sitting too long at a desk. And so mm -hmm. all of these things started happening. And I realized that I had so much more time trying to recover from all of these things than if I would have just taken the time to care for myself. So um, the biggest misconception now is that you can't be a really busy person. I feel like that goes for a lot of women. Yes. You can't be a really busy person, but also take care of yourself. Like when people, uh, I'll joke with friends and they'll be like, do you even have time to watch TV? And I'm like, yeah, I'm binge watching the same shows you guys are yeah. on Netflix at the same exact time. Like we're all doing it together. I just happen to like, you know, I might be working when I'm watching the show, right. but um, you know, I wish that I could really impress upon people. One, how important it is to take care of yourself in the moment so that you don't end up with that long recovery time. But then two, that just because there's a woman doing badass, chingona like doing the work yeah. also doesn't mean that she can't be relatable and do the exact same things you guys are doing in terms of self-care and i guess that goes for um men and and non-gender conforming folks too just you know a busy person doesn't always mean that they are not enjoying their free time well first of all brooke i huge point and i know you're you're i'm gonna say you're my little sisters i'm assuming you're younger because I've been around for a while. Uh, but I, I love the fact that you get that now. It's taking me a long time to get to where you already are because I was of the belief that you had to keep pushing, you had to keep grinding. I had I had a drink, I was drinking once at a, a bar before we could go, when we used to be able to go out. And I had this client of mine, he's like, Jasmine, what? Are, is everything all right? I was like, yeah, yeah, it's great, it's Friday. And he was like, I just haven't seen you drink before. I was like, are you serious? I keep vodka on tap at home. What are you talking about? It was to that point, because I think he's just assuming you like this one dimensional woman, you're out there grinding and hustling. I'm like, I just know how to hustle, get the drink, get my work done. But I think that's so important. And I'm also happy that you have taken time for your health too, because that is so scary for all that to happen. So I'm glad we need you here. We need your leadership here. So I'm so thankful uh, that you, you've put that here. Speaking of, now we don't normally have all these men um, giving us love on the show. So I don't know if it's y'all because y'all are on here. George, thank you for, for giving us a shout out. It's usually just those ladies here, but we need men in order to do, I feel like anything with women's advancement, women's empowerment, it's like preaching to the choir. We are so much stronger when we have those really amazing men that get it and support it. So George, thanks for the love. Uh, thanks for tuning in um, as always. So we're, we don't have a lot of time. So I want to end on um, mentorship and a question we always ask uh, every week about spirit animals. Um, mentorship has been huge in my life, but I also know sponsorship. I was just talking to a friend, uh, Jennifer, my sponsorship is huge too, because 
you can get someone to a table, but if they don't have the resources to, to make things happen, then it's hard too. So I want to ask you both, tell me the impact mentorship or sponsorship has had in your life. And then who is your spirit animal, your spirit animal woman, whether she's here currently um, from the past, she could be a friend or she could be someone famous. So um, Brooke, I'll start with you. Um, mentorship, how has it impacted your life and your spirit animal? And then we'll end with Nick. Um, just really briefly, I am a first generation high school graduate, college graduate, and now soon to be law school graduate. So mentorship has been critical to me. Of course, my biggest mentor is my mom. Um, she gave me the foundation of everything that I am. But to get me to the tables that I've been able to be at, I've had a lot of incredible mentors that um, have really, and to note the difference, folks that have mentored me and actually given me advice, but then folks that have taken that next step and sponsored me by getting me that conversation I needed or bringing me to the table with folks that and introducing me as someone that they trusted. Um, my biggest Texas spirit animal is Selena, which I feel is, was perfectly timed with the cover that you. That's why I was like, you do it, Brooke. Like I've been listening to her just because it's been that anniversary of her. And I've been listening to her crying, but like, you know, at the same time, because her life was cut so short. Why, what does she mean to you? Yeah. So Selena, um, as a child, when I, so I actually was born after she passed away, but my family listened to her music. Um, and my grandparents are huge fans. So I would watch the movie with my grandma and she would like take the time to show me the washing machine dance whenever that would happen in the movie. Um, but really Selena started to mean more to me as I got older, really, I didn't understand at first, but the identity of being Mexican and American or really having two identities and American, um, I heard somebody mention the other day, I wish I could remember who it was about the fact that we want to embrace the fact that we are Mexican and American or um, whatever the beginning identity is and American versus Mexican American, because these are two beautiful different identities that come together to make us versus one identity limited to what people conceive is that so huge, huge point too. And I, what's so great about Selena is that she transcends uh, ethnicity, age. I mean, she just had that spirit about her too. So um, I thought that was amazing. Monica, thank you so much for joining us. I thought this was a great, this is always a great week kickoff for me too. It really gets me inspired. So thanks for tuning in. Nick, um, mentorship for you, sponsorship, um, and then who's your uh, spirit animal? Yeah, um, really quickly, just give props to Brooke again um, for taking care of her health. Um, mm -hmm. With my platform, my tagline is the home of holistic hustle. So she's the epitome of that. So thank you for modeling that. Um, mentorship has been really important throughout my career, whether it was college, law school, whatever it might have been, just for someone to like strategically lay out where the red flags might be and other opportunities. Beyond that, sponsorship uh, has been even more important in my adult life now because I have, it, it's kind of become this mastermind situation where I mentor other people who also then mentor me because we have different specialties and we have different um, areas of expertise. And so those people, the biggest thing they do beyond advising me is connecting me with other people who help me understand like they give me the seat at the table. Like they tell me where the table is and then they actually pull out the chair and say, Nick, sit here. And that's huge because um, we know that that doesn't always happen. So sponsorship has been critical. My, my Texas woman spirit animal would be Felicia Rashad because uh, you know, who doesn't love Claire Huxtable? I mean, come on, she's everything. I, I wanted to go to law school because of her. I know, and it's just like I, I've, I've been, I want to get a T-shirt that says "Some days I'm Claire Huxtable, some days I'm Cardi B." But you know, um, so I just, accurate. I, you know, sometimes a little bit of the ratchet comes out, but we're righteous too. It's all good. Oh, yes. oh, um, yes. Claire Huxtable just was the epitome of grace and elegance and strength and intelligence and and just goddess vibes like all the time and so wasn't she like one for come from like from the cosby show perspective like one of the first kind of tv well we've had tv moms but like the first black tv mom yeah she okay. was and i mean it was really interesting that i don't think she won any awards for the show but she certainly was deserving of of uh, you know those types of accolades but for me when i think of that that figure that that feminine you know goddess energy i mean claire is number one number one 
She's amazing. She was also, that was the first time I saw you could have a fireplace in your kitchen. I was obsessed with that at night. Now, Brooke, I don't know, that might've been a little bit before your time. I'll have to send you a, a clip, girl. But she had a fireplace in her kitchen and, I, and I, at like nine or 10, I didn't know you could do that. Like, so she she represented- She's on another level. Yeah, so many things, right? So, uh, well, I wanna thank you both for joining me. Our time, of course, is up. As I told you, this runs by so, so fast. So um, I- connected you because I felt like you had some similarities, but now as we've been talking, you guys should probably have quite a bit. And that's kind of what, what the impetus was, was for her Texas is that we have so many things in common and what would happen if, if the women in the state got together for the greater good. Um, and to know that you're not alone too. So I'm, I'm thrilled to connect you two. Uh, hopefully you all will talk about some holistic hustling. Cause I agree. I feel like <laughs> poster child for that, Nick. I think that was a good call for yeah. that. Brooke, if you got questions on bar exam, hit me up. We can chat. I will. <laughs> I will. Thank you. You're very really welcome. Thank you so much, ladies, for, for joining me. And thank you all for tuning in. We send a big email blast out every Wednesday. This episode will be included in that. We'll also have details on our big launch. It is going to be really fun. Y'all, I'm not even shooting that from my house. Like, we're turning this up. Like, <laughs> We're gonna, it's going to be really, really fun, May 3rd. So I hope you tune in for that. You can go to hertexas.co.co um, to sign up for our newsletter. It goes out Wednesday. Um, you can learn a little bit more about Nick and Brooke in that newsletter too this Wednesday. So have a fantastic week. I hope you all have, uh, you kill it this week with your goals and know that you're not alone. We are a connected community and we'll see you next week. Bye. 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 <laughs>